What's up everybody, my name is Vic from the Online Starting Block. In this video, I'm going to show you how to collect items on your website. So when people come in and you need their name, their phone number, their email address, you can get it right then and there. And I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Boom. All right, so we have followed this series that is called how to start a personal website from scratch. And you've made it this far, I have a website called A Personal Study. If you want to know what to do and how to set everything up from scratch, click on the link that appears at the top and it will take you to the beginning of the whole entire playlist. This is probably one of the final videos of this series. And by the way, if you want to stay organized and get a checklist of items of the things that need to be set up, like your domain name and your hosting and WordPress and your plugins and stuff like that, go to the description and click on the link where it shows the checklist that you need to get. It is right there, free download and it's right there for you. And by the way, hit the like button so this video can be spread everywhere. All right, so enough of that. Let's now check this page out. So this is the website, apersonalstudy.com, and I'm an Elementor. So let me actually backtrack. I'm just continuing this series. Let me backtrack real quick. Let me go to the page. All right, so this is how it looks. And to get here, you wanna to go to your website and then forward slash wp-admin. And it will take you to the dashboard and WordPress, assuming you have WordPress, and then go to visit site right here. All right, so this is the website that we have made so far. It's not perfect, but you can update it now using Elementor. You can update the hooder, the header, and the footer using the customizer. And that is that. All right, now this section right here is where you can collect your first, last name, uh, phone number, email, and have a message. Now, how is this set up? Now, this is using a plugin called WP Forms. So this was installed when we actually set up the template. And if I was to go back to dashboard, and I went to plugins and installed plugins, there is a plugin that was installed that was called WP Forms Lite. You will go to settings and you will set that up. I will be there in a second. Let's actually go to pages, all pages, and we're gonna check out the home page, which is right here, our personal study, official site. And the reason why it's front page, I actually never explained this. The reason why this is known as the front page is because when we go to settings and go to reading, this was set up actually when started templates set up the theme. So when you first set up WordPress, your homepage displays your latest posts. That is how it is by default when we first set up WordPress. But when we had set up the template from Starter Templates, it actually made the homepage be a page, a different page. And that page for the homepage was a personal study official site. So that's what that was. And then save changes. And that was the homepage that we made. And this page is right here. Go to pages, all pages. And this was the page that's called a personal study official site and it is the front page and it's also made using elementor i can click on edit and this is where i could change the name of this page i can call it official sites i can just call it a personal study call it a day i can do that that's what i did and that is the link right here so www.apersonalstudy.com yours will obviously be different if you follow along now let's edit this page with elementor and the reason why I'm an Elementor and I'm showing Elementor is simply because right here, so where it says book a free consultation, if I was to click this right here, it says WP Forms ID 740. This is known as a short code. That is what is put here in the text editor. That is how they set that up. Basically, this is a short code and the short code is like a little thing that makes this appear. Another thing you can do as well is you can go and click this and then go back one more time and then type in WP form or does WP click and drag to the bottom you see that thing appear click on drag and hit that then it's gonna actually select the form there was a form that was made that was called contact form that is that right there and it literally is the same thing right here it could either be a short code or it could be a contact form let me actually remove the short code so delete, 
all right so this is basically the contact form that is how that works and boom so now this contact form came from the plugin wp forms so how do we basically determine what is first name last name phone email message how do we determine that the way we do that is this let's go back to exit the dashboard so click on that three lines and then go to exit the dashboard and then from there you want to go to where it says wp forms and the same place is actually in plugins installed plugins if you scroll down it's settings right here this is wp form settings and it has all this stuff right here you can go to email there's all this stuff right here that is there we have the free version so you just want to go to all forms so wp forms all forms all right so you can see that contact form that's what that is now you can make a new form or you can just edit what's already there let's edit what's already there maybe one day i might make a video about wp forms but right now let's edit what we already have and this is the contact form first name last name phone number email message so right here first name the label is called name which is right here and then the format is first and last i can just make this simple where it's just the person's name right here or i can make it first middle last right there first and last is fine unless if you just want the person's name that's cool if you want to have something here you probably want to go to advance and the placeholder you can say your name so you can do that you can have a default value but you don't need to do that and i think that's cool phone number you can have somebody's phone number if you want them to leave it here and you can make the phone number required it doesn't have to be required and you can delete the phone number right there and so you can just have three fields and that's that if you want to bring the phone number back make sure fields is selected right here and then go to add fields which is already selected and then look for phone number which is it might have been a uh, fancy field. Let me go phone number. Okay, so it's a pro feature, so I can't do that. Okay, that's fine. So what I would just do is I would just go to single line text, click and drag, and then that's that. I will say phone like that. Make this required. Go to advance, field size, make a large, placeholder text. I will say phone number or this phone. And then hide label, make sure that's selected so it can look like that. And that's basically what we can have. And placeholder text, you can say like 555, you know, 666. Ooh, no. 777, 1000, for example. That's a random number. And then email, you can do like labels, email. But if you go to advance, the placeholder text, you can say your email. Or you can do email at email.com and then message whatever message you want to put out you can do that as well or if you don't want a message you can just remove that boom so that's that another thing you can do as well is you can do a drop down so you can do like drop down right here you can say that if you click on drop down you can say i'm looking for and then you have first choice second choice third choice and so if you click that it shows the three choices you can do that as well i'm looking for a dot 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 i'm looking for a doctor a a clinic and i can probably remove this you can make this required if you want so the person can't submit it if it's not there that's that and then finally this book now button that's the submit button i can say submit done that's the name of the form. You can keep that as it is. And then that is that. So if I was to go back to fields, that's how it looks like right now. Click on save on the top right. And it saves the whole thing. All right. So before I go back, let's go back to settings. Now this part is very, very important. You want to go to notifications. Actually confirmation, sorry. You want to go to confirmation. After they submit it, it says, thanks for contacting us. We'll be in touch with you shortly. You can say that that's fine. You can even make it go to a different page if somebody submits. You can redirect to another page and put the URL there. Or you can go to another page within your website and do that. 
So that is an external page. Once somebody submits, this is a regular page. And this is a message that you can have. We'll automatically scroll to the message. That's completely fine. But the problem I'm looking for really is, so when somebody submits the form, notifications, enable notifications. You want to go to notifications, enable notifications. So where do you want to send to? So the admin email. So that's the email that you use to sign up to WordPress. If you look at the administrator in the account, whatever the email is, it will send to there. So if your email is correct as an administrator, then that's cool. If it's not correct, you highlight, right click, cut, and then put your email at gmail.com or whatever email it is, and it can send to there. Let me actually delete that, right click, paste to put that admin email back. This email subject line, this is the subject that comes in. So it says new entry contact form. I like to change that to say someone has reached you or somebody has submitted the information. You can put that there. And then from who? It says dental clinic. You want to change that. This is the part you want to change. So you want to say your company name. For me, it's a personal study. You can be anybody else. And that's that. So that's the part that sent the email address email subject line and from name. That part is very important. That's it. Click save. All right, so now the form, if I was to go back to fields. So all that was in the settings section, by the way. So if I was to go to the fields, this is how it would look like right now. Let me actually open up a new tab and go to our website. And since this form actually was called contact form, that's what it was called. And you can change the name over here, but that's the name of this form. And now if you see the form now, you can see your name, email, sorry, phone, email, what I'm looking for. So let me actually say your name, phone, and email. Let me do that. Since there's no labels. If I had a label there, then it would have said, you know, name, phone, email, then all that. But I don't want any labels. I want this to make this look sleek. And that's how it was by default. So I would say placeholder text. I would say phone. And then click on email under advanced. So under advanced, place over the text, I would say email and then save it up and then go here, refresh the page. And that looks much better, cool. And I'm looking for a doctor or a clinic and then click submit. And basically what will happen is that the information will be sent to your email. And that is that. I could actually make another form if I wanted to, I can make a second form by clicking on the X on the top right. And then I can make a brand new form. And then I will say a second form. And then the form would be, a form would be a simple contact form. Let me use this template. And that is how this form will look. And now it's a second form and then save it up. I'm just gonna save it. And then let me go back here and then let me go to edit page and open up Elementor, which is basically the builder that allows me to edit started templates. That's what Elementor is. It's a builder that helps me edit started templates. Best way to explain that. Hit the thumbs up button, by the way. Hit the thumbs up so people can know this video exists. All right. And so if I was to go here and click this, now I'm on edit WP forms because that was the thing that was put here. So really I just got to go and search widget, type in WP form, WP, and then I drag WP forms and that's what this is right here. And so what kind of form did I want? There was a contact form, there's a second form. I just made that up. So that is what it looks like right here. But I don't like that. It looks very terrible. All right, so I think that's cool. And so that's all that is. So you can't like update the colors and anything like that. You just, what you see is what you get. View page. And that is the form and that's how you collect people's information. So now, where do you see their information once they submit it? Let's go to WP Forms. So let's go to all entries. So this is where everybody has entered the information. Well, wait, in order for you to see everybody that's entered something, you have to get a pro version. Now, let me just click here, I'll just go from there. So upgrade to WP Forms Pro. So if I was to click there and I upgrade to the pro version, so upgrade now, 
just the pro version as you can see it's 199 dollars 50 per year that amounts to almost 20 dollars a month something like that you don't want that at all however there is a way where you can get people's submissions what happens really is that when somebody submits their information it would actually automatically go to your email and whatever email you have it will automatically receive it but sometimes the form may go to your spam folder because it comes from wordpress you don't want that so there's a way where you can overcome the entries going to your spam folder and it can go right into your your regular primary inbox so in order for your entries to go to your primary inbox and your email but not your spam folder there's one more plugin we need to install. Let's quickly install this. And this plugin is called SMTP. Go to plugins, add new, type in SMTP. WP mail SMTP by WP forms. That's two million installations. Install now. When people submit their information, it will go straight to your primary inbox, not your spam. So install that, activate it and then click let's get started. Now mind you, this only works when your domain name is actually your domain name. If you have any temporary domain name, like when you first set up Bluehost, do not do this step. Wait until your domain name is fully set. All right, so choose your mailer. So what you wanna actually choose is send in blue. So choose that one, send in blue, go to continue. So sending blue allows a couple of hundred emails every day. All right, get started with sending blue. So click this. All right, and then sign up for free. You wanna put in your email. Me, it's a personal study 2022 at gmail.com. So put in your business email and then create an account. So make sure you put a password there. All right, cool, click create an account. It's gonna ask me to verify it. So let me go there. Send in blue, complete your registration. Confirm my email address. Confirm the email. All right, and then it's gonna ask, I need some information. Let me put my first and last name and then phone number. Click on next. Then it's gonna ask for my company name. It's gonna need my information. So a personal study, that's the name of my company. You can put your own company name click here and it's going to ask you for your street address zip code and your website put all that there so your website for example will be for me is https forward slash colon colon a personal sorry www.apersonalstudy.com you can just also put a personal study.com just like that that will work as well but that's what i did now put your street address and then click on next after you're done this is going to ask me about my business team size zero to one how many contacts do i have one in 300 business activities this is a let me see what am i doing i'm providing a service business sector is asking a lot of questions let me actually put medical health do you sell online no uncheck that save all right it's going to ask to choose a plan so i get 300 emails a day i knew it was a few hundred let me do the free one Continue with free plan. So now I am good. Let me click on skip the step. So the last thing I want to do now is I want to go to where my name is and then go to SMTP and API right there. And you'll see why in a little bit. Go to click here to create my first API key. Name it, I will say first key right here. Click generate. And it's gonna give me this key. Let me actually click on this thing right here. It copied it, click OK. And why did I do all that? Because now let me go back to this area right here. And it's gonna ask me for my API key. Click paste. And I can just click this link to go to my API key, but that's cool. So for the sending domain, in order for your emails to send and receive correctly, you have to configure your sending domain. So if I was to go back to send in blue, and make sure that you bookmark this page if I haven't actually said it. So like bookmark this page and you probably want to call it send in blue. That's all one word emails. So you can know what it is. And then just make sure you bookmark that page so you can come back 
And remember, send in blue, all this does is it allows you to send emails from your contact page or from your homepage or wherever people can contact you. When somebody submits the information, that it goes to your Gmail. That's all Send in Blue allows you to do. You don't use Send in Blue to actually check your emails. It just allows your emails to be sent. So hopefully that made sense. So as far as the, where was I at? The sending domain, you want to go to senders and IPs right here on the left side. And once we're here, go to domains in the middle and click on add new domain. So from here, you want to put your domain name. Mine's is a personal study.com. Yours is different. Just make sure that whatever you put here, it is actually the domain that goes to your, your website. And don't put like www or like the HTTPS forward slash colon www. Don't do all that. Just put your domain name.com. That's that. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to check this box right here and then go to save. And now it's gonna ask you to authenticate this domain name. This basically means to confirm that you actually own the domain name and emails can be sent through that. So this may look confusing, but just follow me right here and this will all make sense. To do this, you actually have to go through Bluehost, which is the web hosting server that you use to create your website. So if you follow our series, you will use Bluehost. If you're just looking at this video for the first time and you didn't follow the series, then use whatever web hosting company you have. So if it's HostGator or SiteGround, you can follow these same steps. So what you want to do is for us, we use Bluehost. That's what our website's files are at. So let's go to bluehost.com and then go to login. Now that you're in Bluehost, you want to go to domains, click that. And you see all these options, my domains all the way to subdomains. We're actually are not going to select any of these, but you are going to click. Let's click on assign. There's a reason why we're doing this. All right. So now this pulls up, but we're actually going to look at the left side. So same options on the domain, but there is a new option there that says zone editor. That's actually what we want to click. And I don't know why Bluehost makes us click one thing to go to the zone editor. I don't know why. I used to think that this is a glitch over time. It's been like this. So I think this is on purpose. It is what it is. So from here, this is where you want to go to the zone editor back to send in blue. It says set a TXT record for that. So to do this, let's go to Bluehost and just follow me right here. Make sure your domain name is what it says it is, which is very, very important. And for HostGator and SiteGround or any other web hosting, this will be the same thing. Just look under your zone editor and you will see the same options. So the type of record, make sure it is a TXT record right here. So the host record, this part right here, this is the host record right there. So this mail dot domain key. So everything within its parentheses, highlight, right click, copy, go back for the host record, highlight, right click, paste. And then for the value, the TXT value, you want to do this whole entire value right here. So you just want to click on this button right there, which highlights and copies all of that up here. Go back to your Bluehost for TXT value, right click, click paste, boom, and then click on add record. So the record has been successfully added. So if I was to go down here to TXT record, I'm looking at where was I at? I think this is the one I just put in, which is mail.domain key. Mail.domain key. This is the one, the MIG. So to make sure that it actually got in. MIG. Perfect. So it's the same one. That's what we want. All right. So we're going to do the same thing for the rest of these records. So for the next one, you want to select another TXT record for a personal study or whatever your URL is. A personal study won't be here. Yours will be different. So right click, copy that everything within the parentheses. So go back here for this record and make sure it's a DNS record. So for type TXT, once again, for the host record, you want to paste that. And then for TXT value, 
you want to basically copy this right here. So just click copy on the bottom. Just really highlights all this and then right click copy. But I just, just did that and it automatically copies it. So go back and then for the value, click paste, hit add record. So make sure that it got successfully added. Perfect. Go back, gotta do two more of these. So you're adding two more TXT records for the domain name that you have. So right click that, go back uh, for host record, do that. And then for type TXT, that's what we want. And then for value, you want this value right here. So you wanna click that, go to paste and click on add record and make sure that the record is added. And then finally, finally, you wanna go to the last TXT record. This is actually optional, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So within all this, right click, copy, go back, go to host record. So paste that value type needs to be TXT value is all this, but just copy that by clicking this, go back here, TXT value paste, click on add record for the final time right there. All right. So if I was to go back to my records, if I was to look under TXT, which is over here, so I can see all of these that got added. You can even see the in blue. That's perfect. So now let's go back and let's verify it. It may take up to 24 to 48 hours for it to fully work. So let me see to verify it. So it is not verified, but it is added. So that's fine. It'll probably take 48 hours for it to be verified. No problem. So I'll come back here in 24 to 48 hours. It should work with no issue. So let me get out of that. And if you ever have any issues, there's an article I'm going to link to the description. This is how you set up SMTP, the plugin right here with Send in Blue. So the step I was talking about literally was add new domain and then basically add all these files and then basically verify it. And then once everything is verified, it will be verified just like that. But it may take a little bit for Bluehost to actually verify it. And that's fine. It says if nothing happens, don't worry. It takes 24 to 48 hours. You just check again later. That's perfect. And then once that is done, then you just continue right here. What you would do is you would basically come back here, go to authenticate this domain, click that button, and then make sure that all of these, so access has configured. So now some of these are configured. We configured everything with the exception of, it did not configure this third one over here, or the second one. So let me see what's going on. So this didn't get configured. Let's see what happened. So that's an SPF record. So SPF, SPF, I think, oh, okay. I think because there are two SPF records. I think that's probably what happened. Let's fix that problem. So this SPF, the two of them. So I actually want to remove the one that says the SPF one. Cause there's two SPFs. This actually came with Bluehost. So there's another one that showed up right here. So I actually want to remove this one. So remove that. Now there is one that says V SPF one. And let's go back to this one. This is the V SPF one. So it includes boom, 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 yada, yada. So this is what I'm going to do. Since there's already a record right there, I'm actually going to edit this record. So click on edit. If you're on Bluehost, you'll see that. And any other thing like SiteGround, HostGator, you can see this as well. So what I want to do actually is I want to just take this include part include all of this and let's see if that actually works so the take away is vspf1 i don't need that and then basically go here and after the all i'll hit space and then paste and so now this basically got here As a matter of fact let me after this all so make sure there's a space between all and then do include and i think that should do it or actually just to include so include this include that all so there might be two of them let's see if this works if it doesn't work then i know what to do i'm probably going to take away one of the alls all right let's see what happens so verified it's configured so all this is verified so let me actually get out of there let me refresh the page domains, 
authenticate this domain. All right, perfect. That's what I wanted. So that actually worked. So if you were kind of confused, just go back and just look at the video again and you'll see exactly what I did, especially when I put the space after the all that came in, the first all, this all. So just do that and now it's configured. Hit I'm done. All right, so it is now authenticated. That's exactly what we wanted to authenticate it. Perfect. So now let's go back to this thing. Sending domain, make sure the sending domain is the same thing as this domain right here. So this is actually my website. It's actually my website. It's sending domain. So click and paste that. Go down, save and continue. So you can get a weekly email summary. You can keep that checked, that's fine. Save and continue. It's gonna ask for recommendations. Let's go skip the step. And then the final thing, it's going to ask you to upgrade with the license keys, skip the step, and let's see what happens. It's not configured properly because it's gonna ask you still to activate your account, which is fine. Go to start troubleshooting. All right, it's gonna say it's not activated. And the way to find out is in your plugins list, look for WP Mail SMTP. That is the plugin you got, go to settings. And then when you go to settings, and this is exactly how to like configure what you just configured, make sure Sending Blue is highlighted, everything's fine. Then from here, you wanna go to email test at the top. You wanna go to, just basically, where do you wanna send a test email to, that's fine. Click on send email. And if it's not activated, you will get an error, and the error will say, Let's go to view error log. It's going to say unable to send email is not yet activated. Please contact us at this email right here to request activation. But if everything worked fine, you will see a message just like right there. You'll see a message like this that your test email was sent successfully. And then when that works, that means when somebody goes and actually fills in your contact information on the front page or on your contact page, you will actually get an email from WordPress. But I'm not getting that right now. So what I have to do is actually need to write them and ask them to activate my damn account. And so I'll just go to contact and send in blue and right click copy. And then I'll basically was sending me email and I'll let you know how that goes in a quick second. All right, so I am back. So basically what I did was I went ahead and I basically did a compose. I right click paste and then my subject was please activate my account. And then from here, I just basically wrote this message. I already did it, but I wrote this message. Hey, can you please activate my account? I already verified our domain. Here's the error log I received. I write that down right here. Let me actually make this pull up. So I write this down right here, paste. And then the error log, to get that, I will just go back to my tools. And you wanna go to view error log, so you can see it and then click on copy error log right here. Then once you do that, you go down here, right click paste. That's the error log. And I would say something like, what did I say? Thanks. That's literally what I said. I said, thanks. <laughs> Let's go back. So I said, thanks. And then my name. And then I literally just went and hit send. Boom. So that's what I did. So I did that a while back. I got a message that says, thank you for your patience. Boom, boom, yada, yada. Ultimately, what happens is I'm going to get a mail from them, an email from them, and it's going to ask me for some questions. It's going to say, thanks for reaching out. I'll be happy to activate your account. So this actually will come maybe like 20, 30 minutes later. And it's going to ask for some questions. It's going to say, you need some details. What's the link to your website? What kind of emails you'll be sending? And what's the estimate of volume of emails? I don't know why they're asking that. I think they're getting a little stingy of who they allow to come in the platform, which is ridiculous, but it is what it is. So basically I replied and I said, hey, Anke, I think that's her name. I just called her by her first name and I answered the questions. Link to my site. I literally just went to my website and I just took the beginning of the domain name. So I double click the URL, I highlight the beginning of the domain name, right click copy. And I went back and I just pasted that right there. That was one and then two type of emails. I said our emails were sent through our contact form on our website. And then the volume, I just said 50 to 100 emails that would be sent every week. That's not an accurate number. It could be less, might be more, but that was a good average. I hope this answers your question. Thanks. 
I just sent that, so that was my reply. So you can use this as well as your reply. Just look at what I sent. You can pause the video and just type in what I sent. You can use this as well for you. Just make sure your URL is different than what I currently have. So once that is done, I should get an email a few hours later that says, you got your information, you all good, it's activated. And then once you know you're all good and it's activated, then and only then will you go in and go back to the WP SMTP plugin, click on settings, go to email tests, and then send an email to yourself, click on send email, and you should get a message that says it has been approved and you're good. And to really make sure that's approved, just go to an e-cognito window or a private window if you're using anything other than Google Chrome. And then from here, you wanna to go to your website. Then after you go to your website, just send a test contact message to yourself. Like just fill this form in for yourself. So let's do 566. 777-3111, number I made up. Put in your email, a personal study, personal study 2022 at gmail.com. And then I'm looking for who? I'm looking for a clinic. Click on submit. And it's gonna say, all right, thank you for contacting us. We'll be in touch with you shortly. And eventually you will get an email that will come from WordPress that says, hey, you have an email that has been sent and you should be straight. And if you don't see it, check your spam folder, but it will come in your inbox. But right now it's not coming in your inbox because this account is not active, but once it is active, you will be good. So just be on the lookout for that. And that is exactly how you configure your emails to be sent through WP Mail SMTP. And once again, if you have any questions, I will send you a link of this blog post right here you know, just wait about one or two days and then you can finally be sending and receiving emails. Sorry, you could be receiving emails from your contact form and you can basically just write them back if you want by hitting reply and you're all good. All right, so I am back. It's a few hours later and they have finally sent me some emails. So the first email I got from Send in Blue was that my account was validated. So that's what I wanted to see, perfect. And then the next email I got was the update to the chat that I just showed you. So this was the last email that I sent. And this was the response that I got. It says, hey Vic, thanks for reaching out. I have grabbed this ticket in the absence of my colleague. Basically what they're saying is that they took a long time for them to respond. I think in the situation it took like about eight hours before they responded, which is way, way too long. But they went ahead and activated the transactional capabilities and we are good. The next thing to do, which is very, very important, and it took a while before I started re-recording again because I ran into some issues with sending an email and I figured out what the problem was. So remember, if you follow this series, when I signed up with Bluehost, I used the wrong email address and I had to correct it on Bluehost's end. But the problem though was that that wrong email had translated to my WordPress account. When I was sending emails to myself to check if this worked, it was not going to my account and I realized it was because my email was wrong. So there are about three places that you want to check to make sure that you have the right email. The first place you want to check is underneath the WP SMTP where it says settings right here. So this is the plugin. So go to settings. And so on the settings section, you want to make sure that this from email, make sure the email is the correct one. I had it wrong. I actually had it a personal study without the 2022, but I need to put mine for 2022. So make sure that's right. Save settings. That's the first place. The second place is to actually go to your user. So users and then all users, or you can just go to profile. But this is the account that I have. Go to edit. And then make sure if you scroll down, make sure your email is correct right here. So make sure you have the right email click update profile. And if you do change this email, you will get an email from WordPress saying, hey, a new email is there. Please make sure that it was you that actually wanted to change the email and confirm it. But now here's the most important place for you to change your email. So you wanna to go to settings and then general. So you wanna make sure, and this is what messed me up. You wanna make sure that your administration email address, you wanna make sure that's correct. So I had this wrong. I had it without the 2022 
because that was what I originally signed up for Bluehost with. So that's why, like, you know, whenever you sign up for Bluehost, make sure that your email is correct because it translates to everything in WordPress and it will mess you up if it's not correct. You want to make sure that your email is correct and then go to save changes. And then afterwards, once you do that, if the email is different, you're going to get an email from WordPress basically saying somebody wants to send a new email, please confirm it. And then you confirm it and then it will change. So once all that is done, you will go back to one more place, which is let's go to WP forms, all forms. So you want to check the form that you created or that was already there. It's called contact form. Click on edit. So this form had all of the information that I needed. You want to go to submit. So you want to click on the submit button, which takes you to the settings, go to notifications. You want to enable notifications. So turn that on and then the send to email address. You want to have that your admin email. So that was the email that we just fixed at the general settings section. So if that email is wrong. You will not be getting emails when people send the information to you. So that's very, very important. Oh, I would say someone reached out. All right. Make that from a passive sentence to an active sentence. A little English grammar going on. Passive versus active. All right. So let me go to save. All right. So everything should be set. I think we should be good now. So let's go and get out of this. So click on the X to get out of the screen. Let's go to WP SMTP. Go to settings. Let's send the test email. So click on email test. And let me send it to myself and make sure this is on as well. The HTML part, click on send email and you should have a confirmation message that says success. So that's what you want to see. You want to go back to your email and let's see if it pulls up. I should have something pull up. There we go. I have to refresh the page and it's underneath the promotions. So go right here and right here. This is the email that I'm going to see. I was testing it before just to make sure it worked. All right, and it says, congratulations, your test email was sent successfully. That's what you want to see. Now, you may see this message that says, be careful with this. This may be a spoof message. Spoof message basically means that sometimes, let's say like the word personal was spelled wrong, like it was missing an E, but it looked like it was correct. So it's saying, you know, be careful with that and you can report spam or look safe. So for some reason, when you use send in blue, you will always see this pop up. It's going to be pretty annoying you want to click on looks safe and that's that. So it is not suspicious. And then after a while, I believe that pop up will stop, but that just shows that you are good. And this also shows that Gmail is making sure that you don't get spammed with bad messages. All right. So the test email worked. So now let me go to an incognito page. So if I'm in Chrome, I will click on the three dots, go to new incognito window. If you are like an in internet explorer or Safari, it's called a private window, I believe. I think Firefox also calls it a private window, but let me go to my website, a personal study.com. And then let me go in and do a submission of myself and let me put a fake phone number. All right. An email. Let me put any email I want. I'm just gonna put any email. So test at test email.com. I'm looking for, looking for, let's say a clinic. Click submit. So this is what the end person will see, the end user. This is what they will see. The person who visits the site. That's what I call them end user. That's a tech term. <laughs> Thanks for contacting us. We'll be in touch with you shortly. You can change this in your settings if you want under the confirmation part of your form. You can change that message and that looks good. So let me go to my email and let me see if I got an email. Refresh the page. Should have received the email. All right. Got an email. It says someone reached out. Click on that and then this thing will pop up, which is pretty annoying. Click on look safe. And that's the information that was sent. And that is how you get emails from your screen. I know that was a lot of steps, but yeah, that's what it is. Now, if you don't want to have that pop up that always comes, that yellowish orange looking thing that appeared at the top of here, you likely would have to use your own professional email address, like support at your domain. So support at a personal study.com or whatever it is you want to use that. And then from there, you would eventually will have to go back to WP mail SMTP. If you use, for example, if you use like Google workspace to get your professional email address with your own domain name, you would just change this to um, other SMTP right here. And then you would probably put the Google host 
and the Google username and password, and it makes sure that's encrypted. And then from there, you'll start getting the emails when somebody submits a form and you won't see that message on top. But you don't have to deal with that right now. What you have already is good enough and you are good. So finally, let's go back to the homepage. You have everything you need. If you want to update the form, you can even go to WP Forms and that's the name of your form and you can edit the form right then and there from your homepage. That's another way you can go there. They give you multiple ways for you to go to your contact form and your homepage is one of the ways. And from here you can rearrange the form if you want. You can add what you wanna add. If you wanna make sure that's required, you wanna click on required right there. All that is good. We are good in the hood. And yes, so if you followed this entire series from beginning to the end, you have done it, you have created your own website just like that. Obviously you wanna change the pictures and things like that and you are good. If you just came to get the form done, you have gotten it. I knew that was a lot of technical steps, but you got it. And I'm happy for you, you finally did it. If you wanna stay organized on all the steps, look at the description and click the link in the description that has the free checklist that I have where you can go and see everything that you need to have from your domain name, from your hosting to WordPress, all your plugins that needs to be set up and all of that. That is it. This is Vic from the online starting block. Hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up, let your friends know about this. And we have more videos available. Just check out what you see right here. If you see another video that you are probably interested in, or you can just go back to the beginning of the series if you just started from this video and start from the beginning and let people know that you can create your own website. All right, that's it. Much love.